What's that, man? You heard me? This the Lil B Jeezy represent. Stand focused, believing in God, letting God guide us through our path. Is there a reunion tour in the works as well? Me and BG definitely going out. I don't know um, about Wayne. In the early 90s, brothers Lana Williams, a.k.a. Slim, and Brian Williams, a.k.a. Baby, would found a creative force on the independent music scene that within five years would become one of the rap industry's most successful record labels. In 99 alone, Cash Money Records, driven by their own hip-hop sound, that will blend rap with guitar, 808 drums, and keyboard-infused tracks being done by Mighty Fresh would sell more than 9 million records. Based in New Orleans, Louisiana, a city far removed from the major hip-hop scenes of New York and Los Angeles, Cash Money Money would help establish the South as a viable contender on the hip-hop scene. After determining to reinvent Cash Money, Slim, Baby, and Fresh, who had joined the team a few years earlier as the in-house producer, would release Chopper City by BG and Soldier Rad by Juby, signaling a new direction for the label. This is the story of Ronald Sugar Slim Williams, aka the Don of Cash Money Records. Ronald J. Williams was born in 1964 to Johnny Williams and Gladys Brooks, who respectively spent his childhood in a rough uptown New Orleans neighborhood called the 13th Ward on Balance Street. Slim and his brother Baby are the founders of Cash Money Records, the most successful rap label in the music industry to date. Ronald and Slim's mother would pass when they were both young kids. Baby was five, Kim was eight, and Slim would be ten. After her passing, Mrs. Gladys' brother Joseph, unaware that she had passed, would fly in from KC, ultimately driving the kids to Prince George, Canada. They would later be brought back to the NO. The boys would be put into the care of the state until Mr. Johnny was able to produce the paperwork showing that he was their biological father. Consequently, Mr. Johnny would run local businesses, including a lounge he named Gladys Bar after Slim's and Baby's mother. Mr. Johnny would raise the kids alone for years, instilling in his sons a solid work ethic, teaching them how to run a business. While the two brothers would seem polar opposites, Baby being energetic and outspoken, while Slim tall and gangly with a sense of calm that can be somewhat scary if you don't know him. Both would have a military state of mind adopted from their pops, Johnny. For Slim, neither him nor Baby would have the opportunity to develop a relationship with their dad outside the family business because he was always working. Although some would say that Baby, the younger of the two, will be spoiled by Mr. Johnny. Slim noted in several interviews that his dad worked so much to provide them with what he didn't have coming up as a child. Even when attending the Little League baseball game that his bar would sponsor, Mr. Johnny would be busy selling concessions from his truck. Family friends would say being that Slim and Kim were the oldest, they would always go with their move on Baby and his little partners. With Mr. Johnny being an entrepreneur, bringing a decent income, his kids would come up having a bit more than the average family in the neighborhood. One Christmas, Baby and Slim would receive gas power mini bikes, while the other kids would receive pedal bikes from their parents. From a young age, Slim would go to work with Mr. Johnny and help him clean up. It was then that Mr. Johnny would teach Slim how he ran his business. Wanting Baby and Slim to be entrepreneurs, Johnny would teach Slim how to handle the money, aka the books. Unfortunately, Mr. Johnny would pass in 1995. He would only see the beginning of his son's venture into the business of rap music. Mr. Johnny did, however, believe in his son's potential. In 1991, Slim and Baby would launch Cash Money Records. Two would begin by selling tapes around the end from the back of their whips. At the time, a new form of hip-hop known as bounce music was popular around the bars and clubs. Baby and Slim, eager to blow up their new label, would jump on the new trend, experiencing success with well-received recordings by their, at the time, local artists, UNLV, Kilo G, Miss T, Lil Slim, and Pimp Daddy, just to name a few. Hometown notoriety would not be enough for Baby and Slim, who both wanted national recognition. It wouldn't be long before they would put their heads together and devise a new plan. Per Slim, there would be dissension amongst the ranks. Slim would be unhappy with the lack of commitment being shown by the talent on the Cash Money roster. After many failed attempts at trying to teach the talent the inner workings of being an artist as far as handling meetings, signing autographs, doing interviews, showing up on time for shows, etc. will all fall on deaf ears. In the words of Slim, they just weren't hungry enough. 
the first little change they would make, everything would just go to the wind. They were dibbling and dabbling, getting loaded, showing up late for appearances and meetings, even once showing up late for one of their own video shoots. Slim had gotten to the point where he could no longer deal with it. For Slim, one morning, he would wake up and say to Baby, you know what, bruh? I got to get rid of these little dudes and just start from scratch. Incidentally, three of the label's original artists, Pimp Daddy, Kilo G, and Yella of UNLV, would all lose their lives. Then we'll later learn that his artist BG would be struggling with the grass of 11.5, controlling his every move. The brothers would abandon the entire Cash Money lineup and move forward with BG, Juvenile, and Lil Wayne. They would take BG in, a troubled kid at the time, and raise him like a son. According to Slim, he and Baby would rather take on less talented rappers who take their work seriously over those who were greater talent who lack discipline and willingness to abide by the cash money code of ethics. After struggling through 95 to reinvent cash money, Slim, Baby, and Fresh, who had just joined the team a few years earlier as the in-house producer, would release Chopper City by BG. This would signal a new direction for the label. Rather than focusing on strictly New Orleans bounce, cash money would instead mix bounce with hardcore rap, introducing more melody and synthesized guitars and fusing the tracks with an overall 808 sound being done by Manny Fresh. BG, a young teen at the time, would tackle challenging subjects. Amid the usual rhyme celebrating cars, money, and women, he exhibited an ability to write more vulnerable narratives as well, such as discussions about the crushings, his own struggles within 11.5, and the childhood growing up in the streets of New Orleans. As money upon the release of Chopper City had emerged with a whole new form of rap, which would go on to be the new cash money sound. Within two years, the cash money organization was attracting major label interest. On June 18th of 1998, Universal Records, a part of Universal Music Group, which encompasses MCA Records, MCA Nashville, GRP Recording Company, Kiffin Records, Interscope Records, Universal Music International, MCA Music Publishing, and Universal Contracts, was signed an exclusive agreement with cash money to distribute, promote, market, and generally support the label. Subsequently, the Cash Money roster would flourish, bringing New Orleans sound to hip-hop fans across the world. Unfortunately, with good comes the bad. BG, Juvenile, Dwayne, and Turk would all eventually leave the label. Turk, Wheezy, and BG would all do jail time. Juvie would return to the label on two separate occasions. Since then, Wayne, Turk, and BG have done their jail time. BG coming home in September of 2023. With the release of BG, rumors and speculations have circulated as to a hot boy reunion. The rest has yet to come. This was the story of Ronald Sugar Slim Williams, Cash Money Don.